Piers Morgan is a monarchist who thinks the royal family are, quote, worth every penny. But to his credit, he is open to debating other ideas. And as part of a Prove Me Wrong segment on his talk TV show, he invited on two Republicans. They were YouTuber Alex O'Connor and from Republic, who laid out his case against the monarchy like this. Firstly, it's wrong in principle. It's not democratic. It stands on a completely different set of feudal values instead of the values of uh, accountability, equality, and democratic mm -hmm. uh, rights and so on. Secondly, as an institution, it is not fit for purpose. It falls well short of the principles of public life. Um, I, I don't think it's going too far to say it's corrupt. And constitutionally, in terms of our politics and, and the way power is exercised, it funnels a lot of power. Well, what have been the four it. most watched events globally involving this country in the last three years? Yeah, but that doesn't really... Go on. Well, you're going to say the weddings and the Jubilees. Just answer, answer my yeah. question. You're going to say the weddings and the Jubilees. I'm not well, sure that's even the case, because I think UEFA had... Um, well, forget, uh, forget football. But, well, but, <laughs> okay, you can't just say forget football. When the world looked at the Platinum Jubilee, for example, when the world looked in a very different tone at the Queen's funeral, the King's coronation, you look at these events and it shows Britain, in my view, at its greatest. The pomp, the pageantry, the ceremony, the military precision. Oh, Everything cool. worked like clockwork. Everyone around the world who was watching this, who was watching, and I, as a caveat, many people are not interested, I get that, but the millions, tens of millions around the world that watched it thought better of our country. How many things has happened in our country in the last three years involving our leaders, for example, which have brought shame and ignominy to the country? Here, you have a chance to show us at our best. Uh, what what yes. price do you put because on There's that? nothing about the royal family that's brought us shame in your opinion, that you've been sort of, oh, loads of relentlessly as human about. beings, the, the idea that the human beings they are above as, the politics, they are as fragile country. as any of us. And you say, you know, it doesn't help us to escape the various political scandals of prime ministers and presidents. Well, does it? I, I thought you were the one who's constantly banging on about Harry and Meghan and how they're a disgrace to our country or whatever it is. I don't, I don't think. Well, I think they're, they're, I think rather like you two, their attempts to damage the monarchy and bring it down are actually disgraceful because I happen to support the monarchy. But so that's, few, that's a different argument. A few big events is not an argument for a constitution which is second rate. It's not an argument for an institution that abuses public money, that abuses public office to lobby for their interests. It's a very effective form of debating, actually, because one thing they didn't do is sort of... What Piers Morgan wants you to do when you go on his show is get outraged. Because the moment you get outraged, he thinks, here is where I can pounce and I can make you look like you're a sensitive liberal um, who gets offended at everything. What those guys were doing was keeping it very, very calm. And Piers Morgan ended up having to say things like, well, forget about football. Um, I, I, aside from football, aside from the Olympics, aside, they're, they're the biggest events apart from... X, Y, Z. Now, once you're making those exceptions, you look a little bit like you're crutching at straws, don't you? I mean, also, I think the point that was made there, which is sensible, is that while you might get some good publicity for certain events um, involving the royal family, such as, in an odd way, I think even the Queen's death was probably decent publicity for, for, for the country because, yeah, they, we put on a good show. But it's very, very risky um, having your PR strategy as a country based on a family who inherit their positions, because what if one of them is a Prince Andrew, right? Let's look at some more of that debate. If you're going to have a monarchy and a royal family, and they're performing over a thousand duties a year, like garden which parties. is not a lot. Well, they're, they're actually getting lots of charities and they do a lot of help for people, which right? they couldn't do as private citizens. That, well, they, they could, but it wouldn't is... have the same impact. Okay. But here's my, here's my point. Here's my point. If you're going to have them, you should give them all the trappings. Why? Of a Why? Because where's, otherwise where's the, they're not a royal family. The they're not a monarchy. Where's the logic? The logic the, is, the, if you want we, people to buy into the magic of a monarchy and royal right. family, but it's not, you've got to give them the tools to not, be magical. It's not magic, it's corruption. What would you have them in? A little te Tesla? Uh, maybe, no. maybe, a, maybe a suit. Uh? That'd be fine. We could start by getting rid of these ridiculous garments. We spent most of the time that we've known what, now dressed King like Charles you? dressed like me. I mean, and so to see him for the first time... You're the king dressed like you. No effect. Well, but... he'd probably put on a tie. Uh? He'd look more like you, I suppose. Yes. To see exactly. him suddenly put on these robes would be like watching Rishi Sunak or someone suddenly it's, but it's part of our history. ludicrous and actually, robes. It gives, but it's something, it gives us something it's so few other countries in the world ridiculous. have. Yeah, Nobody can take it seriously. And you may not like Nobody it, you take it seriously. But many around the world love it. If you go to the Caribbean, if you go to America, you go to Canada, many you go to India, you go anywhere in the world, Australia. It's very odd to use the Caribbean as the example, because obviously, as we've been talking about on this show for the past year, lots of countries in the Caribbean want to leave the Commonwealth. Barbados already planning um, to leave the Commonwealth. I think Jamaica is now thinking about it. Um, so this idea that everyone in the Caribbean loves 
Prince Charles putting on these wacky costumes, I think is a little bit far-fetched. Up next, they discussed what many use to defend the existence of the monarchy, its impact on tourism. And they bring they in just so money. much money yeah. from tourism. Well, they, that's not true. It, but it is true. Money. No, it is. It, that's it definitely not is true. It's definitely not true. Now, the thing is, there is no evidence. And I've sat down with the CEO and chair of Visit Britain uh, about a decade ago, and I said, there's no evidence that if we got rid of the monarchy, tourism would go down. And they said, yes, you absolutely You don't right. think the royal family brings in any money from tourism? There is no yes. evidence that that tourism money wouldn't come in anyway. I mean, if you, just, like the if you just look at the money that came in, in the weeks leading up to these big events that we've had over no, the last the, four you years, look at the huge amounts of money If you look in, at the visitor numbers. American tourists no, pouring the in. The Australian go, tourists. The Canadian visitor tourists. numbers go down when these things happen. If you look at the visitor numbers, they go down when these People things happen. People stay away from these kinds of things. And, and if I may say, Cheshire Zoo is a bigger tourist attraction in the UK than Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle. Mm. I wouldn't be in favour of a state-funded ceremonial opening. When was the last time hundreds of millions of people exhibit. around the world on I television certainly, I certainly the, would watched not the be birth of a penguin at Chester Zoo? I certainly would not be in <laughs> favour <laughs> do of its <laughs> owners or its directors, or indeed the, the, the sort of sometimes sinister and yet still to be pitied animals that are kept within its cages, given any kind of political when office we, over the rest of us. When do we beam the lives of the, the inmates of, Taurus, of Chester Zoo the to the, the world? The winds of Taurus are not a good justification for political office. I didn't realise that point about Cheshire Zoo. I mean, the, the one I often use in those conversations is Versailles, because many, many, many more people visit the, the Palace of Versailles in France than they do Buckingham Palace or Windsor. Now, what did the French do to their monarchy? Um, not too difficult a question. They obviously abolished them and um, in, in a pretty bloody way. So the idea that you need to keep the royal family for people to keep turning up to the palaces Again, seems a little bit far-fetched. Of course, I think Versailles is probably quite a bit more attractive than Buckingham Palace. So if we became a republic, I'm not sure Buckingham Palace would have quite the appeal Versailles does. Um, but the idea you need to give them um, the power to veto laws just to bring over some tourists, again, not too strong. And I think Piers Morgan was starting to realize that. The absurdity of his position, though, reached new levels in this next clip. What about uh, William's campaign at the moment to end homelessness? Yeah, fantastic. Funded by what? Funded, yeah. by, funded, funded by us. And, and yeah. what's this, like three million, three three million, million pounds? pounds. You say so you don't like his campaign against homeless? I think it's, it's formative. formative. What have you got against the homeless? It's nothing he couldn't do huh? as we, a private citizen. We give him 22 million pounds. What do you have against the homeless? What is it? We, what? Have, we give him 22 million pounds. Yes. We could spend that on. So you don't want him to help the homeless? That's the most ludicrous thing you've said on this show, and that says a lot. <laughs> The bar to, is low, I agree. To, to say that this is something that requires royalty, to say that this is something that requires he has some kind of political office, that he's going to inherit the head of, uh, head of statehood, the, that he's going to become the head of state of this country, that's got anything to do with his ability See, to get three million pounds to charity. What do you have against the homeless? That man is losing. Piers Morgan is losing that debate and he knows it. I'd actually be very interested to see if they don't, because I, I think this is a sort of new segment he's doing on the show, Prove Me Wrong. As I say, fair play, bringing on people to sort of stress test his arguments. But he's got two people who are more articulate than him, and he's resorting to what do you have against the homeless? I don't think even the most cynical royalist viewer will be watching that and thinking, oh yeah, these two guests clearly hate the homeless. And <laughs> that was a wretch, not a wretch, a reach. By the end, let's look at our final clip. The only thing left for Piers Morgan to do um, was to make the debate about Alex and Graham. A pair of you wake up every day and you think, how do I end this thing I hate? Why don't you just ignore it? It's a bit like vegan. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. We're, we're having a vegan debate in a minute. It's a bit like vegans who run into steakhouses screaming abuse about well, no, meat. It's a bit like, if you don't like meat, like, like, go and eat it's your a bit, brawl it's a bit in a little like, restaurant in the corner. It's a bit like saying... Leave me to eat my steak. It's actually a bit like say, getting up in the morning and saying, I want to end homelessness because I hate it. I want to end the monarchy right. because it is a bad thing. It's bad for Britain. It's bad for our governance. It's not bad for Britain. It's bad for our governance. And also, it's not it's bad, bad for our image. Two out of the three it's times. It's purely it's ceremonial when it comes to governance. Two out of the three times that but I've ever ceremony, spoken about this subject. The pomp and the because you've invited me to. Those are two what? of the three times that I've ever spoken about the subject in public. Yeah. It's because you've invited me to. So I don't think it's me who's banging on about this. <laughs> two of the three times he's ever talked about this in public is because Piers Morgan invited him. It's one of those where we are so inundated with misinformation in regards to the, what the royals do for this country and their importance in our, in, our, in our constitution, our sense of identity, and it just falls apart. Once you engage with the slightest uh, disagreement, uh, Graham Smith, who's the CEO of Republic, I interviewed him, him uh, for Navarro Media, you can catch that on Downstream. Very sharp man, and his counter arguments are always very, very good. I mean, on the point on um, foreign countries, they love the royals, well, there was polling out from Lord Ashcroft, I think in May, Michael, which had Australia, Canada, the Bahamas, and Jamaica would not want 
King Charles as their head of state. That's very recent polling. So I find it really, really odd that he, he said that. I mean, that's, that's com- the complete opposite direction of travel politically, as you hinted at. But actually, it's even worse than just the West Indies or, or the Caribbean. Uh, and then, you know, another one is what it means for the UK economy. It's just one of those weird shibboleths and talking points that Wright loves to go on about. It's a bit like fishing with Brexit. You know, fishing really doesn't matter to the UK economy. It really doesn't matter. For certain places, of course, historically, it's been a big part of the local economy. Somewhere like Grimsby, Hull, Hastings, parts of Kent, sure. But today, it really doesn't matter for the UK economy. You know, Games Workshop, Michael, who produced those little toys, like Warhammer toys and stuff, their turnover last year, or their revenue rather, was around £440 million. It was more than £400 million. All of the things they sell are manufactured and produced here in the UK. You know, I I would argue that we're not far off a, a situation where economically, Games Workshop matters more to the UK than the royal family. Little Warhammer toys. So, you know, let's have the debate. And I, I think the reason why we haven't had the debate is because the minute you do, and we actually start, start to assess this thing on facts, then uh, royalists and their cause are on very thin ice. Yeah.